Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone. Today we are going to listen to a KTP webinar by our technologist Dr. Ahmad Zahirani bin Ahmad Azhar. Let me introduce our speaker today. Dr. Ahmad Zahirani bin Ahmad Azhar is a senior lecturer at Department of Manufacturing and Materials Engineering, Kuliah Harvard Engineering, is National Islamic University, Malaysia. Our speaker today had completed his PhD in Materials Engineering at UST Science Malaysia in the year 2013. For your information, all audience, uh, our program today will be conducted in bilingual. Hence, feel free to ask either in Bahasa Malaysia or English. Without further ado, I may invite technologist Dr. Ahmad Zairani to deliver his talk. Please, Dr. The floor is yours. <coughs> uh, terima kasih, Madam uh, Fariza. Sama-sama. Uh, can you assist me with sharing the screen? Okay, thank you. So, uh, pertama sekali saya ucapkan terima kasih. Thank you very much uh, to Madam Fariza and also uh, Oil for giving me the opportunity to have this session today. Uh, to have a sharing session with all of the audience on the KTP Reads. Uh, let me again introduce myself. My name is Ahmad Zahir Rahim bin Ahmad Azhar. Uh, I'm a senior lecturer from the Department of Manufacturing and Materials Engineering, Kuliah of Engineering, IIUM. Uh, for your information, uh, on 2019-2020, I have completed uh, the research uh, KTP Reads with the title of Environmental Friendly Concrete Bricks made with waste for sustainable construction with utilizing waste material from Dahlia Industries. So today I was informed by uh, our office that there's going to be some audience outside from the university and also uh, viewers from inside the university. So uh, I try my best to explain uh, what is KTP Rig first and then I share with you guys uh, what I have done and what is the output of the research. So let me uh, talk a little bit uh, what is KTP RICS, uh, known as Knowledge Transfer Program Research Initiative Grant Scheme. And this one is organized by the Office of Industrial Link, IIUM. And normally the project duration is one year. Objective of this grant is to establish and grow a relationship or collaboration of the university and the, the, and the local organization. Uh, this include industry, small to medium enterprises, government agencies or communities. Uh, principal investigator are to undertake a project to help the community and industry to achieve capacity building attributed to the knowledge transfer by the expert academician and it is important that the academician who apply for the for this grant must have the body of knowledge ready to be transferred to the community and in industry concern <coughs> i think uh, in secara ringkas ni mungkin saya boleh simpulkan di sini adalah KTP Rix ni adalah satu platform yang mana uh, researcher ataupun academician di universiti boleh uh, membantu uh, industri tempatan dengan memberi idea sama-sama untuk membantu uh, sebarang masalah ataupun challenge yang dihadapi oleh industri. So this is a, a good platform uh, for researcher who want to go on the ground and to be directly involved with the industry because uh, industry they have a lot of things that they can offer to us academician. Of course, uh, sometimes when we learn, when we do research, we do fundamental research. But when we try to apply the knowledge that we have into the real application, uh, you will learn a lot of things that uh, sometimes you might not even think about it before. So I can say that I have learned a lot uh, throughout this KTP Rigs, and I will share some of the information with you today. And the most important thing in KTP Rig, of course, is about the partner. Uh, finding the right partner is everything uh, in KTP Rigs because uh, when you want to apply for the grant, uh, you need their consent as well and you need their cooperation from time to time. Project need to be involved at least one community and at least one industry who share financial responsibility, monetary or non-monetary contribution, meaning that uh, the industry that I work with, uh, in my case, which is uh, Dahlia Industry, they give some contribution. Uh, in terms of non-monetary, I'll show uh, what it is later on. Project partner must have specific needs or problem that need to be addressed. Uh, the, the one, the partner that we want to join together, they must have uh, the problem 
or the issues that need to be taken care of. Projects should have positive impact on the industry and community receiving, benefiting the knowledge transfer program. Of course, uh, ini memang straightforward. The aim of the grant is to have a, a positive outcome uh, to both the university and also the local industry as well. Uh, projects should produce at least one intellectual property rights. Uh, these cover module, survey instrument, training slide, booklet, and all apps. <clears throat> when I applied for this grant in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, uh, stuck, pada waktu itu hanya diperlukan satu partner industri sahaja. Uh, bila saya semak balik, uh, dia punya guideline semalam, I saw that uh, now the, the requirements have increased to at least one uh, organization of a category as community. Okay, I think this one is something that uh, mungkin you need to to look into. <clears throat> so this is my project that I propose to oil. Uh, environmental friendly concrete bricks made with waste for sustainable construction with utilizing waste material from Dahlia industry. So in short, in summary, uh, you can see that there is two figures in the slides, uh, in the screen. Uh, the left side uh, is waste and the right side is useful products. So basically, uh, the, the project that I have been working for is to convert or to transform the waste that they have at the, at the company into something that we can use or something that uh, the company can sell. Uh, the good news is uh, we are able to do it. Uh, as you can see, the, the brick on the right uh, picture, but there are some uh, drawbacks or weaknesses uh, while doing this project. That one I will also share with you later. Okay, so basically, uh, this is what I did. Apa yang saya buat? Ambil uh, tanah-tanah ni. Uh, kita uh, proseskan dia dan hasilkan satu bata yang uh, tak berapa kuat sangat but still can be used in some other application. So let me give some introduction uh, on what is Dahlia Industries Sendirian Berhad. Uh, is a manufacturer that specialize in industrial concrete poles for many years. And this company is located at an industrial area at Nilai 3. And you can see from the photos over here, uh, the company uh, fabricate uh, concrete poles for the use of uh, electrics, uh, wiring, and uh, for telecommunication purposes. And this is some other product that they produce, uh, concrete pole, transmission concrete spun poles, uh, kicking block, and other concrete product. Uh, Dahlia industry, they specialize in concrete. I think uh, we, we can say that uh, concrete is their main product. And all day they produce concrete poles, uh, sometimes, of course, uh, from time to time, they do produce uh, poles for different type of application. Uh, sometimes for communication, sometimes for electrical purposes. And I think the latest project that they did uh, is for the uh, train railway route from Gemas. That one, I think, uh, is still ongoing. So when they produce, uh, when they want to produce concrete, uh, unfortunately, at the same time, there are going to be a lot of uh, waste when they do the process, when they did the process. So that's where I came in. Uh, my this is the the picture that I got from the internet. Uh, when we go over there, they didn't allow us to take pictures of the waste, you know, because uh, confidential matter. But this is the the similar figure that I can found uh, in the internet. Production of concrete based product produce concrete slash waste. So it's it's, it's a byproduct when they rotate. Uh, the concrete very quick when they want to produce the concrete pole there will be a, a slurry of concrete that need to be uh, put aside so that one when it is being dried uh, it consists of uh, some cement particles and also some waste uh, this waste is very difficult and expensive to dispose uh, it will take a lot of money uh, to, to dispose them and it can be hazardous to the environment Releasing sludge into the river can cause silting, meaning that it can harm the environment. They can harm the fishes uh, in, in the river and negatively affect the environment. Application of sludge in soil or farming plantation has received negative response due to the metals present in the sludge. There are also trace metal, meaning that uh, dalam uh, bahan buangan ini, 
banyak uh, bahan-bahan besi ataupun bahan-bahan kimia yang boleh dikatakan uh, agak berbahaya kepada sungai dan tumbuh-tumbuhan. Dan jika dibiarkan terlampau lama dan jika berlakunya hujan, uh, air dari hujan tersebut uh, boleh menyebabkan uh, bahan-bahan besi ataupun uh, heavy metal ini dia pergi ke dalam sungai dan boleh mencemarkan sungai. Of course, uh, over abundance of sludge is very costly and environmentally hazardous. And uh, this is where uh, the researcher from IIUM, IIUM comes in. There is a team of us, uh, consists of me, Prof Yusof, Dr Nur Hashima, Dr Muatas, and Dr Sharifah Imi Hazri. And uh, this is what we propose to them, uh, because based on the literature that I did, uh, based on the previous research paper, I found that there is already a solution uh, that people use uh, this uh, waste material to produce a non-fired eco bricks meaning that uh, we can take a, a small portion of the waste and we can use it uh, to fabricate uh, concrete bricks and the advantage of concrete brick uh, is that compared to clay bricks uh, batu merah tu kan batu merah kalau nak hasilkan nak fabricate dia tu uh, dia kena bakar dia kena bakar dalam furnace uh, dalam suhu yang agak tinggi tetapi untuk uh, batu concrete Uh, dia tak perlu dibakar, hanya perlu direndam di dalam air uh, untuk beberapa minggu sahaja. Jadi uh, boleh dia dikatakan proses untuk menghasilkan bata konkrit ini agak selamat, uh, tidak menggunakan kos yang tinggi. Uh, cumanya uh, the question remain uh, because we are using, kita menggunakan waste as one of the raw material uh, macam mana dengan kualiti material ters, uh, bata tersebut. So uh, just uh, a little bit information, uh, sedikit uh, maklumat tentang uh, concrete bricks. Uh, Bata concrete terdiri daripada empat komponen semasa dalam proses uh, pembuatan tersebut. Dan boleh lihat di sini, satu, dua, tiga, empat. Yang first kali adalah semen ataupun waste. Yang kedua air, water, uh, fine aggregate, uh, pasir halus dan juga uh, batu batu kasar. Eh. Dan Uh, apa yang saya cuba buat dalam uh, penghasilan uh, bata konkrit menggunakan waste ni saya tukar, saya swap uh, the the amount of waste dengan semen. So here you can see uh, dekat table kat sini uh, menunjukkan uh, amount semen dan juga waste. Uh, start dengan 100% semen dan 0% waste and slowly uh, tingkatkan uh, the the amount of waste di dalam semen. So uh, based on the first glance, waktu sekali pandang pun kita dah tahu, saya dah tahu uh, the quality of the bricks will decrease with the increasing amount of waste because uh, waste, the, the, the function of cement uh, in this concrete brick uh, is to give, uh, is to act like a glue, macam gum eh? untuk memegang all of these uh, other components such as the pasir dan batu kerikil. So uh, with the dengan berkurangnya uh, amount of cement ni, of course dia punya strength ataupun dia punya compressive strength, the one that we targeted at 20 newton, uh, 20 MPa, uh, you're going to get decrease. And the, the purpose of this research is to find the sweet spot. Kita nak tengok. Um, what is the optimum compressive strength with the suitable amount of waste that we use so that uh, at the same time we use waste and at the same time we save some amount of cement uh, butter concrete uh, the compressive strength can be increased uh, when one of the process one of the step in the process is that uh, the the mixture need to be put in the water for curing and The, the period can start from 7 up until uh, 28 days and from this graph uh, on the slide boleh tengok dekat sini yang mana garis purple ni menunjukkan uh, peningkatan compressive strength makin lama dia direndam di dalam uh, air uh, dia punya compressive strength akan meningkat uh, based on the literature I found that that uh, researcher usually use 7 uh, start from 7 days until at 28 days so we in, in this research we aim for 28 days because after 28 uh, kita boleh tengok peningkatan compressive strength uh, dah semakin tepu jadi di sini kita rasakan 20, 28 hari merupakan 
uh, tempoh rendaman yang sesuai untuk mendapat uh, optimum strength. <coughs> so this is uh, ini adalah proses penghasilan uh, batu konkrit, uh, semen and waste material dry in oven. Uh, bahan buangan tersebut dikeringkan dulu di dalam oven. Uh, and then ditimbang mengikut uh, berat masing-masing uh, there is some calculation uh, to to produce the concrete waste based on certain standards uh, cement waste and cost aggregate and fine aggregate are mixed and water are mixed together to, and stirred until it is fully blended uh, solution are poured into the mold uh, dituang ke dalam acuan uh, dan dibiarkan di, uh, rendam selama 7 14 ataupun 28 hari and in this uh, experiment saya biarkan selama 28 hari and then sampel uh, di, di subjected uh, untuk testing dan mechanical test so this is the photos of me and staff from uh, Dahlia Industry Mark here and this is what I mentioned about the non-monetary contribution uh, Dahlia Industry sponsor all of the raw materials uh, for us to conduct the experiment uh, they send from Dahlia Industry uh, to IIUM all, all of the waste, the cement and also the aggregates. Air je pakai, air pipe UIA. So the, when we receive all of the waste, uh, the waste need to be uh, processed first uh, because the waste they have, uh, they dah uh, apa? jadi ketul-ketul batu uh, disebabkan terlampau lama. Jadi kena dihancurkan terlebih dahulu. And you can see from the slides, uh, this is the process where we uh, grind or we make the, the waste become uh, into finer size. Uh, ketukkan dia dengan gandin getah ni and then we tapis, uh, kita filter menggunakan sieve machine uh, to get a very fine and very smooth particle. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this one, the size is around 1 micron, uh, uh, similar size with the cement. So that in hoping that uh, the waste and cement, they can uh, bond together because of the same size. Uh, this one takes a few weeks uh, untuk, untuk pecahkan batu-batu waste ni menjadi pasir yang sangat-sangat halus. And this is uh, another uh, photos of the preparation of the uh, raw materials. Uh, ini dia tengah uh, menunjukkan gambar sedang timbang. Eh? Uh, berapa banyak uh, uh, raw material yang diperlukan measurement of the component used to fabricate concrete bricks utilizing waste and this is the prototype the, the mixture of concrete brick fabricated from solid waste and you can see uh, this is the prototype where we subjected into uh, compression strength test uh, it is in the form of a cube uh, this is uh, in summary the concrete uh, preparation mixture of cement waste cost aggregate fine aggregate and also water and on the on the last image over here uh, you can see the tank uh, tempat tank uh, and the label here mentioned here curing tank yang mana bata-bata konkrit -bata ini di direndam uh, untuk 28 hari uh, dan gambar ini menunjukkan dia punya mold okay uh, mold dia berbentuk cube uh, untuk testing compressive strength and uh, this is one of the final product that we produce using the commercial mold uh, because at that time we decided based on the strength that we get from the test uh, we believe uh, due to the reduced compressive strength because of the amount of waste uh, one of the application that we can use for this brick uh, is using for pathway or walkway so this one uh, is a non-bearing load application and it is a very low risk application so uh, subjected into uh, the, the brick that we have that we fabricated we subjected into some uh, characterization to understand uh, the behavior or to predict uh, the strength or the behavior of the concrete bricks so i just share some of the result in here and this is the compression test uh, you can see that uh, the testing machine uh, the, the brick will be placed on top of the platform and dia akan tekan atas bawah, dia akan compress tekan and check uh, what is the strength of that material. So this is the, the selected result that I share with uh, with you guys. So let's go with the uh, micrograph first. 
figure 4.2 cell micrograph for the cement waste brick surface uh, C1 until C5. So C1 until C5 uh, talk about the uh, ratio of the waste and also cement. And when we when I look uh, on the micrograph photos, I think so far there is no abnormalities. I think the 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 surface or the interaction between all of the materials are as expected. The number of porosity is also quite high, which led to the decrease uh, compressive strength. So uh, Weber Weber test also one of the tests where we want to see the the flow. Uh, the good of flow of the cement, if I'm not mistaken. And the most important result uh, in this project is the compression test. So uh, C1, if you look at the table, uh, consists of zero uh, waste, only have uh, 12 megapascal. And the one that uh, amount of C2, the next one, which consists of 25% uh, uh, amount of waste. Uh, is only have around 6 megapascal and the further that we increase the amount of waste uh, the compressive strength of the bricks uh, started to decrease uh, significantly uh, I consult with some of the researcher some of the uh, author uh, about this and they suggested that uh, C2 uh, is the, the best that we can use in this project uh, because when they go further than uh, C2, the compressive strength has, has greatly decreased and below 4 should be, should be not possible uh, for many, for a lot of application. But uh, for 6 megapascal, it is still considered quite low uh, for, for a concrete bricks. Uh, I think this one we already expected uh, for the result to get something like this. Uh, because it is quite difficult to control uh, the amount of impurities that present in the waste. Uh, this is some of the possible applications, some photos that I found on the internet, uh, pathway or walkway. So the, the brick that we produce using the waste from Dahlia industry can be used uh, in this type of application, whereas it is use, using for a walkway, uh, it is, doesn't involve any uh, load bearing application. So for the summary, uh, for the first part, there is a, a, a second part. So the knowledge and process has been uh, how to convert concrete slash waste into recyclable bricks has been transferred. Uh, we, we share with them, uh, with the company, uh, on, on how to do this. However, the brick produced uh, in low compressive strength thus limiting the potential application. Uh, this is something that uh, is quite difficult to predict because when we are dealing with waste, uh, the amount of uh, impurities, although I have done several uh, XRF analysis to, to uh, study the composition, but still uh, the, the amount when we test and when we compare uh, the waste, when we do the bricks, uh, the behavior is different. So this is one of the projects that I have completed with Dahlia Industries in Denbrahat. Uh, based on the research grant. <clears throat> uh, during our time over there, uh, Dahlia also have another issues. Uh, they, want, they want our help uh, to produce or to fabricate a water effluent treatment system. Uh, at that time, at that time, uh, they already have their water treatment system, but it is already obsolete and not working so uh, not working well anymore so while we are there um, dr nur hashima uh, is one of is, is the pic for this project uh, we propose a new system and and uh, a new system for dahlia and as you can see from the figure 3.1 <clears throat> uh, this is the the process uh, of the uh, water effluent treatment system starting from uh, sedimentation pond and then they uh, filter using sand carbon filter ion exchange and then they discharge uh, to the to the drain and at this time Adalia are looking at economical methods on how to have efficient system as part of the project we propose a system for the water effluent treatment at Dahlia 
and this is the the PIC uh, Dr Nur Hashimah also a lecturer from the Department of Manufacturing and Materials Engineering uh, we have a collaboration with a company Filio Water uh, represented by Mr Lam Lam Munhe uh, this is the discussion that we have in IUM uh, we have series of discussion uh, talking about the requirement of the company the requirement from Jabatan Alam Skita uh, because water effluent system is one of the strict requirement uh, from Jabatan Alam Sekitar in, in Negeri Sembilan. So Alhamdulillah, uh, with the hard work from Dr. Nur Hashima, uh, she did a lot of calculation and a lot of drawing. Uh, we successfully proposed uh, a, a good system uh, to Dahlia and with the assistance from uh, Filio Water, uh, they assist with the purchasing of the parts needed uh, to to construct the water treatment system uh, we even present uh, the the proposal and the drawing uh, to jabatan alam sekitar negeri sembilan okay, uh, this is uh, one of our senior member at the department prof yusof is the advisor of the project and this one is uh, brother exan mr mr exan uh, he's a staff from dalia and this is dr nuashima presenting the paperwork uh, to the staff, uh, to the officer at Jabatan Alam Sekitar. And I think uh, they, they received the proposal uh, very well and we proceed with the construction. And as you can see from the uh, figure, just nice uh, before PKP start, 26 December 2019, uh, the, the construction completed and we went there for the commissioning of the water treatment system at Dahlia. Uh, it just consists uh, on about uh, four or five tanks and all of this uh, has been uh, discussed in detail uh, the, the the process flow and also the calculation also of the size of the tank and not only we we give the uh, proposal but we also uh, give some suggestion on how to do monitoring uh, on the system as well because uh, for water treatment system it is important for the discharge uh, water to be monitored from time to time to ensure that there is no fluctuation in terms of the of the uh, pH. Uh, the pH treatment uh, is quite uh, tricky in terms of water treatment system. So I think this is uh, the two projects that we successfully completed uh, during the uh, KTP Riggs uh, grant with Dahlia Industries. And as you can see from the photos here, uh, the, the construction of the water treatment system is very simple, very straightforward. And we, I think we have done this uh, around 40 to 60,000 ringgit, uh, the cost. Okay. We successfully transfer knowledge and expertise on how to operate and maintain a water treatment system at Dalia Industry according to the requirement by Jabatan Alam Sekitar. And I think uh, that's all I want to share with all of you for my sharing session today. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, say thank you uh, to all of the KTP RIGS research member, uh, Kulia of Engineering, uh, Oil, Dahlia Industry and Philly Waters in Amrahat for the support uh, to, to me during the course of this project. I think uh, that's it for my presentation. I pass back to Madam Fariza. Thank you, Dr. Zahirani. Actually, we have a few questions, one in the chat box and then the one from the secretariat. Okay, uh, soalan yang pertama kita ialah daripada Dr. Kalila dari Kuliah of Architecture. Soalannya ialah bagaimana perbandingan kos untuk menyediakan butter yang menggunakan konkret waste uh, versus bahan yang biasa digunakan? Mohon terangkan, Dr. Uh, thank you, Dr. Khalilah Zakaria from K8. Uh, in terms of the cost, we didn't did. Uh, kita, saya tak buat uh, in-depth uh, analysis on that cost. But uh, what I can say, apa yang saya boleh cakap adalah, of course, uh, dari segi cost, the one that I did, the one yang saya fabricate, uh, the cost is a bit lower compared to the commercially available product. But uh, frankly speaking, I think it's not worth it because the strength decrease a lot uh, sebab kita pakai waste the problem with using waste is that we have no control 
of the material contained in the waste and actually the impurity that in the waste itu yang mengganggu uh, compressive strength dia membuatkan dia batal tu menjadi not consistent in terms of compressive strength Okay, soalan seterusnya doktor daripada sektoriat ya, tidak ada di chat box. Uh, saya juga uh, kita ada soalan ya, uh, merujuk kepada jawapan doktor bagi soalan uh, doktor Khalilah tadi uh, bila uh -huh. doktor kata dari segi strength uh, mungkin uh, memang kurang berbanding dengan yang sedia ada. Uh, boleh terangkan adakah uh, brick jenis yang uh, doktor reka ini ada di pasaran sekarang dan kalau ada apakah projek yang menggunakannya? Sebab tadi doktor ada tunjuk di slide ya, uh, beberapa projek yang memungkinkan uh, menggunakan brick jenis yang uh, doktor reka ini. Mohon terangkan doktor. Uh, saya ada dengar uh, some of the project they are using recycle material to produce bricks but uh, dia punya application is more to cosmetic punya application contohnya macam Uh, walkway ataupun tempat nak ambil ais mayang dia di design dan butter tu menggunakan uh, butter yang di recycle but uh, when we when I dig further into this uh, we found that the source of waste uh, is different uh, saya contohnya projek saya ni saya ambil uh, waste dari proses konkrit bila projek lain tu dia mungkin ambil waste dari konkrit uh, yang telah pun dirobohkan Uh, so okay. uh, the the quality the appearances will be different and it's difficult uh, susah lah kalau nak buat uh, pembandingan secara direct. Okay. Jadi uh, saya fahamkan di sini bahawa memang telah sedia ada ya projek yang menggunakan konsep seperti yang doktor buat sekarang antaranya ialah walkway ya. Cuma mm -hmm. uh, barangkali dari segi waste yang digunakan ada beza. Betul ya doktor? Mm -hmm. Betul betul. Sebab uh, saya nampak mungkin uh, apa reka cipta begini memang kita perlukan sebab dengan keadaan sekarang, keadaan ekonomi kita tahu kos pembinaan semakin meningkat boleh jadi ada projek-projek uh, yang boleh mengambil kira reka cipta doktor ni. Bukan begitu ya doktor? Kita harap beri manfaat uh, yang, kepada umat. Itu yang kita harap jugalah macam tu. Ya. Yeah. Sekejap kita tengok ada soalan lagi ke? Okey kita ada satu lagi. Uh, ada satu saya suka soalan tapi kenyataan daripada uh, Liu Yong Kian di chat box the material suitable for for low load bearing products such as furniture. Tolong terangkan doktor. I think uh, this one uh, align dengan apa yang saya cakap tadi. Uh, butter yang dihasilkan tu tak sesuai untuk load bearing application meaning that dinding yang tampung beban dia tak boleh pakai. Uh, tapi uh, macam tempat apa nak ambil ais mayang ke tempat walkway Uh, itu sesuai. I think that one apa yang Mr. Liu try trying to say. Tapi doktor kenyataan Mr. Liu ini dia sebut furniture. Saya sebagai layman yang bukan latar belakang engineering cuba memahamkan juga istilah furniture di sini bagaimana sebenarnya. Saya bila sebut uh, furniture pun, saya rasa saya pun furniture. saya rasa mungkin macam decoration ataupun okey. Ah uh, perhiasan macam itulah. Nampak menarik eh doktor uh, apa ni uh, mak dan maknanya kita mahu audience tahu bahawa uh, KT Piris ni iaitu internal grant dari RMC telah berjaya uh, membantu uh, akademik di UIM untuk menghasilkan reka cipta antaranya ialah apa yang dilakukan oleh Dr Zahirani ya di mana beliau berjaya uh, apa orang kata menggunakan waste materials untuk uh, mencipta concrete bricks jadi kalau tidak ada soalan lagi, sekejap kita tengok kalau ada soalan lagi. Kita minta dia jangan lupa ya isi I attend ada di uh, di kongsi di chat box. Sekiranya tidak ada apa-apa soalan lagi mungkin kita boleh uh, takat ini saja program pada petang ini. Terima kasih diucapkan okay. kepada Dr. Zahirani dan semua audiens yang sudi bersama pada petang ini. Semoga program ini beri manfaat dan mohon panjangkan juga kepada kawan-kawan uh, di tempat lain. Terima kasih. Ya, terima kasih juga kepada all uh, for this uh, kesempatan untuk share. I think uh, Mr. Liu has some good idea. Uh, ha, dia dah tak kasi tu before we disperse. Garden furniture or outdoor furniture. Betul lah ya doktor, garden furniture, yeah. outdoor furniture. 
Betul. Okey, saya ingat kita sudahi uh, sesi kita pada petang ini ya. Terima kasih Doktor Zairani dan semua audiens yang bersama-sama. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.